In this video, we will learn about a type of a pancreatic cyst called a mucinous cystic neoplasm. It is unique that it almost always occurs in women aged 40 to 60, and it tends to occur in the part of the pancreas called the body and tail. Let's learn more about it, specifically the symptoms it causes, the diagnosis and treatment. In this cartoon, you can see the gullet through which the food enters the stomach. The stomach churns it over and passes it to the small bowel. The liver produces bile, which helps in digestion of the fat and it comes down the bile tube. The pancreas is a gland that sits behind the stomach across the abdomen. It has two main functions. It produces insulin and it produces enzymes enzymes which are delivered through the main pancreatic tube and these are responsible for 90% of the digestion. The pancreas is divided into the head portion, the neck of the pancreas, the body of the pancreas and the tail. At the end of the tail is the organ spleen which, which has immune functions. The mucinous cyst neoplasm or MCN is a cyst that means that it is a sac that has fluid within it and it is a true cyst because there is a lining. In this particular case the lining cells have an ovarian type appearance when seen under a microscope and they have receptors for progesterone and estrogen. These cysts can have septi or divisions and they may have calcification or calcium deposits at the periphery. They can get quite large. The concerning thing about the MCNs is a high risk of malignant transformation. Hence, once discovered and diagnosed, a surgical opinion is mandatory. These may not cause any symptoms at all and be diagnosed when a scan is performed for another reason. They may be associated with upper abdominal pain that radiates through to the back or to the left and sometimes to the right. They can trigger pancreatitis which is inflammation of the pancreas which is a very painful condition. And finally, rarely they can cause pressure symptoms just due to a large size where they may impinge on the bowel over here and cause obstruction and very rarely if they are placed near the bile tube they can cause suppression of the bile tube and thus leading to jaundice. The diagnosis of MCN is typically first with a scan CT and MRI are the most important. Here you can find out the size location whether or not there's a solid component indicative of malignancy, calcification, septi, whether or not it's connected to the main pancreatic duct in which is hugely uncommon for MCN and is more likely to be another type of assist called IPMN and whether a malignant transformation has already happened and finally it can differentiate different types of pancreatic cysts. In this CT scan there is an extreme example of an MCN which is quite large. This is the cyst with different septation in between and calcification all indicative of an MCN. The second most important investigation is an endoscopic ultrasound. A flexible tube is inserted from the mouth down the gullet into the stomach. It has an ultrasound transducer at the end which can take pictures but importantly a needle can stick out, aspirate the cyst fluid for analysis and take biopsy of the cyst wall or any other solid component that looks suspicious. Typically, the biopsy may, may show precancerous changes called dysplasia. Biopsying the cyst wall is becoming increasingly important through a fine needle using an endoscopic ultrasound, which gives additional information, the diagnosis such as presence of ovarian type cells and whether or not malignancy has happened already. The fluid that is aspirated is checked for mucin. The most important aspect of the fluid analysis is to establish that this is a mucinous cyst. It is the mucinous cysts that are most associated with malignancy. The checks include the air type of a molecular tumor marker, glucose, amylase and finally mutational analyses of the fluid aspirated. The treatment of an MCN in a fit patient is surgical resection. Typically this involves removal of the left half of the pancreas called distal pancreatectomy and removal of the spleen splint. There is a long-term risk of developing diabetes, about 20 to 30 percent of the long term after this operation, as well as implications for immunity because of the removal of the spleen. The operation aims to remove this part of the pancreas. In unfit patients who are unable to undergo an operation, there, is, there isn't a good enough alternative. More recently, cysts that are less than 3 centimeters in size in the elderly patients, there is some evidence to suggest that they may be observed over time due to the risks and complications associated with an operation in this age group. This completes this video on MCN. If you have any comments, please do share.